In this video, I want to take a look at oh, a bunch of stuff that we've done throughout the quarter and put it all together to talk about the geometry of um, solution sets to systems of equations, both homogeneous and non-homogeneous. The theorem is this. The general solution of a consistent linear system, uh, consistent linear system of equations, ax equals b, consistent says it has to have a, a solution, right? that the general solution can be obtained by adding any particular solution to that system to the general solution of the corresponding homogeneous system. Okay. I'm going to first do an example to show you you can see it working, and then we'll give a proof as to why it always works. Okay. So here's my, my system of equations. Here it's two equations with three variables. So the first equation is x1 plus 2x2 plus 3x3 equals 7. And the second equation, 2x1 plus 5x2 plus 4x3 equals 11. So there's my uh, non-homogeneous system, because it's a 7 and 11. And, the, and down here, I'll do the same coefficient matrix, but with zeros. But let's just see, you know, early in the quarter, how would we solve this? We make an augmented matrix, put in a reduced row echelon form. And then I would say, hey, I've got one column here corresponding to a variable that has no leading one in it. So I've got one free variable. So I let t equal x3, right? x3 equal t. And then I can solve this equation for x2, because you, this would be 2x3, and, sorry, minus 2x3. And you move it over to the other side, so you get minus 3 plus 2x, sorry, minus 3 plus 2t equals x2. And likewise, the 13 is already over here. A minus 7t would come over to tell you what x1 is. So x1 is 13 minus 17. And then we would rewrite this as uh, the constant terms over here are 13 minus 3 and 0. And then there's the stuff multiplied by t minus 7, 2, and 1. Notice what we've done in this section. This tells us that the solution set is a line in R3, because here's a point in R3 plus t times a vector in R3. So this vector, negative 7, 2, 1, is the parallel vector, right? This is a line parallel to the vector negative 7, 2, 1, and it goes through the point 13 minus 3, 0, right? Now we can double check that 13 minus 3, 0 is a solution by just, you know, plugging it in. You got 13 uh, minus 6 plus 0 is 7. Yeah, you got 26 minus 15 plus 0 is definitely 11. So yeah, that, that is a solution to this system, and all of these things are solutions to that system. Now, look at the corresponding homogeneous system. Make the augmented matrix, put in a reduced row echelon form. The reduced row echelon form looks an awful lot like the previous one, except that you got zeros over here uh, instead of those other numbers. Uh, and so when I solve for the variables, I still have a free variable of x3, so that's t, and then x2 is x2 is 2t, and x1 is minus 7t. And what I see here is that this bit right there is the same as that bit right here. That is, this is describing the general solution to the homogeneous system, which I now know is a line through the origin in the direction of this vector. And what I'm seeing up here for the solution to the non-homogeneous system is the same thing plus one particular solution. Right? 13 minus 3, 0 is a particular solution. And you're adding to this all of the solutions to the homogeneous system to get all of the solutions of the non-homogeneous system. That's what the theorem is telling us. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at the proof of that theorem now. Now, the theorem says that two sets are equal to each other. So I, want, I want to talk through the logic of this before we actually talk through the proof. So how do I show that two sets are equal to each other? I need to show that everything in this set is in this one. That means that this is a subset of that one. So I can show that this is inside of this one. Then I say, well, now I need to show that everything in this set is in that one. So that this is a subset of that one. So if one is inside the other and the other is inside the first, well, they're the same thing. Okay. So what I'm going to do is the proof has two parts. I'm going to first of all let x0 be any specific solution to 
this. We say it's given that this is a, a consistent system, so there is a solution. So let x0 be at least that one solution. And then let w be any solution to ax equals 0, so the, non, so the homogeneous system. What I want to show is that x0 plus w is a solution to that. That is, anything of the form x0 plus some solution of the homogeneous system is a solution to the non-homogeneous system. Then I'm going to show that any solution to the non-homogeneous system can be written as x0 plus something, where that something is um, in the homogeneous system. So here we go. Let's take a look at a times x0 plus w and see what it's a solution of, right? Let's a times x0 plus w is, distribute that, a times x0 plus a times w, but a times x0 is b, right? Because x0 was a solution to this thing, so you plug in x0 and there you get b. And likewise, a times w is 0 because w was a solution to this one. And then b plus 0 is b. So x0 plus something from anything from the solution set of the homogeneous system is a solution of the non-homogeneous system. Okay, So anything of this form satisfies this equation. Now I need to show that anything that satisfies this equation can be written in this form. Okay. Now let the vector x1 be any solution of ax equals b. So we had this one we know is a solution, and now I'm saying let any other one. Pick another one. Right. Notice that x1 can be written as x0 plus x1 minus x0. Now, that seems kind of silly to say, but I'm trying to write it as x0 plus something. So what I need to now show is that that something is indeed a solution to the homogeneous system. So let's take a look at just that something. a times x1 minus x0 is a times x1 minus a times x0, but both of those, are x1 and x0, are solutions to the non-homogeneous system. So this both turns into a b, and that one turns into a b, and b minus b is 0. So a times this thing is the 0 vector, and that thing, x minus x0, is a solution to the homogeneous system. So x1, sure enough, can be written as x0 plus something from the solution set of the homogeneous system. So the two sets are the same. And so the solution set of the non-homogeneous system can be written as a single solution to the non-homogeneous system plus anything from, and everything essentially from the homogeneous system. Homogeneous, the solution set of the homogeneous system. Well, I can say that, sure. Let's take a look at some pictures and see the geometry of this. Okay, so what I have here is uh, several things. I have two vectors sketched in here, and those two vectors are the two row vectors. Okay, then I have a black line, and the black line is exactly um, this line right here. So it's the vector negative 7, 2, 1, extended and contracted for a bunch of different values of t. I think I, oops, I, think I have it plotted for t equals minus 5 to plus 5. And you can see that black line, well, if I put it, if I get those two vectors so that they will look like they lie one on top of the other, then you can see that the black line is actually perpendicular to them both, right? So they determine a plane, those two uh, vectors determine a plane, and this black line is perpendicular to both of them. That black line is the solution set to the system, to the homogeneous system, and we saw in a previous video that that has to be perpendicular to both uh, row vectors. Okay. Now, this theorem is saying that the solution to the non-homogeneous system is a single, can be written as a single um, solution plus all the different solutions to this thing. So what this solution is, we said it's 13, negative 3, 0. That's that little black spot right there. And then we're using the direction vector for the solution to the homogeneous system to be the direction vector for the solution to the non-homogeneous system. So where this was a line through the origin, the black one, 
The non-homogeneous system is a line through the point 13 minus 3, 7, but it goes in exactly the same direction as that black line did. So that blue line is the solution set to the non-homogeneous system, and you can see it's just parallel to, um, to the solution to the homogeneous system. If we had had two free variables, then these solution spaces would be planes. The homogeneous solution would be through the origin, and the non-homogeneous system would be shifted up to somewhere else, but it would be a plane parallel to the one that was going through the origin. Okay, So we can see what we're getting are planes, homogeneous systems, planes through the origins, the non-homogeneous systems, a parallel plane, not through the origin. 